first off, let's get some introductions out of the way. My name is Heather and I am with Back to the Wild. And Back to the Wild is a wildlife rehabilitation center. That's a lot of words. <laughs> but what that means is we take in animals that are injured, that are sick, that are orphaned, and we do our best to get them all better. We're not really like a zoo. We are like a hospital for wild animals. So when we get them all better, what do we do with them? We let them go <laughs> because wild animals belong in the wild. They're not like pets. You know, puppies and kittens, puppies and kittens like to be with people, but wild animals, they don't like people at all. They want to live free out in the forest or in a prairie or in the ocean. They don't want to live in a house. So there's a big difference between the animals that are our pets and the animals that like to live out in the wild. Now, the wild animals you're going to get to see today, they do have to stay with us forever. Sometimes when we get animals in that are hurt or that are sick, they don't ever really get better. And can we put an owl in a wheelchair? No way. <laughs> so if the owl can't fly, can she hunt? Nope. And if she can't hunt, can she find food? Nope. And if she can't find food, she might die. So these guys have to stay with us because their injuries, wherever they were hurt, never really got better. And they help us to teach kids just like you about wild animals and about why we need to keep them safe and how we can keep them safe. Now, first off, do you think that we're out there rescuing cute little bunny rabbits from barred owls? Not really. Why? Because owls have to eat. And can an owl go to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal? No. So they have to find their food out in the wild. It does not make an owl a bad guy if they eat a cute little rabbit. That's part of nature. It's just like when you eat chicken nuggets or a hot dog. Animals and us, we all have to eat. And what do we call that when an animal eats another animal who ate another animal? We call that the food chain, <laughs> the food chain. And guess who's at the very top of the food chain? It's not a lion, it's not a shark, it's us, usually. <laughs> We're at the top of the food chain. And that means that if something gets messed up, if one link gets messed up in the food chain, it messes it up for everybody, including people. So you know, I don't really like mosquitoes. If I went out and sprayed a bunch of poisons to kill mosquitoes, what would happen to the toad who ate the mosquitoes? What would happen to the snake who ate the toad? And what would happen to the owl who ate the snake? They would all get sick because of that poison I sprayed to kill mosquitoes. So we have to make sure that we keep the food chain very, very healthy. Now here at Back to the Wild, what we are rescuing animals from are people. So here you can see a picture and your parents would say, that's a seagull, but they would be wrong. <laughs> There's no such thing as a seagull. This bird is called a herring gull. We have tons of gulls in Ohio, but not a single seagull. So this herring gull has plastic rings stuck around his neck. What do we call that when we leave our trash laying everywhere? It's called littering. And when we litter, not only does it look gross out there, but it also hurts animals. So if nobody had found him and gotten these plastic rings off of his head, what would have happened to him? Yeah, he might have died. So it's really important that when we see litter, that we clean it up. If you go to the beach, you can take a bag with you. If you go for a hike, you can take a bag with you. And if you find pop cans or bottles or things like that, you can pick them up and help save wild animals. But if you find fishing line on the beach, make sure you have an adult help you because guess what's attached to that fishing line? Fish hooks. <laughs> Do you want a fish hook stuck in your fingers? No way. So make sure you have a grown up to help you pick up the litter. But picking up litter can help save animals. We can all make a difference. Also, maybe don't litter in the first place. Nobody wants to be a litter bug. <laughs> so make sure that you're cleaning up after yourself too. That's really important to help wild animals. Now, if we're cleaning up out in the wild, that means that we're cleaning up animals' homes. And what do we call an animal's home in the wild? It's called a hab. Habitat. 
and a habitat is the space where an animal lives. And they all live in tons of different spaces. Would you guys ever find a whale in the woods? <laughs> no, because whales live in the ocean. Would you find a wolf in the ocean? No way, because wolves live in the woods or in a forest habitat. So here we have a barred owl, and barred owls like to live in wet, wooded areas because they like to eat amphibians like salamanders and toads and frogs. They also eat mice and things like that. And if we look down here, we have an eastern box turtle. And box turtles like forested areas. They like places to be a little moist, but not too moist, because even though they're turtles, they can't really swim. <laughs> so they have a specific habitat that they live in too. So every animal lives in a different kind of space. Now, let's talk a little bit about the animals that we have here today. We're gonna start off by talking about the turtle. This guy is an Eastern box turtle. And box turtles get their name because when they're scared, they actually have a hinge, just like a door has a hinge, and they can pull all their legs and their head inside of their shell and they can close it up nice and tight, just like a box. And guess what their shell is made out of? What's in your body holding you up right now? Bones, your skeleton, right? Their shell is made out of bone. It's part of their skeleton. So, if their shell is part of their skeleton, can a turtle take his shell off and go for a walk? No way. In fact, his backbone is attached to his shell. You can see right here, this shell, you can see the backbone of the turtle. So if a turtle took his shell off, that would be like you taking your backbone out and going for a walk. Can you do that? No way, you'd flop around like a jellyfish. So these guys hatch out of their egg with their shell already on their back and their shell grows with them, just like your skeleton grows with you. Can you guys show me where your backbone is? <laughs> it's right here, right along your back. <laughs> All right, another cool thing about this guy You'll notice that I had him in an aquarium with no water. A lot of people think that all turtles live in the water, but that's not true. If we look at his shell, you can see it's really high like a helmet. If he were a turtle that lived in the water, it would be flat like a pancake so he could swim faster. Also, take a look at his toes. If he were a turtle who lived in the water, you would see lots of webs between his toes to work like a paddle to help him to swim fast. But he doesn't have that at all. He has long claws that help him to dig around in the dirt because he's terrestrial, which is just a big word that means he likes to live on land. Turtles who live in the water are called aquatic. So this guy is a land turtle. If we put him in an aquarium of water, he wouldn't do very well. He can't swim at all. Now, if we take a look at his eyes, you'll notice that they're really pretty and they're really red. That's one of the ways I can tell that this turtle is probably a boy. Boy box turtles usually have red eyes and girl box turtles usually have brown eyes. And if we lift him up, You'll notice on his lower shell, he also has this nice little dip right here. Almost looks like you could eat cereal out of it. <laughs> but that dip also tells me that he's a boy. Girls have flat shells. Boys have a shell with a dip. But do animals read the rule books? No, they can't read at all. <laughs> so they don't always do things the way we think that they do. And sometimes girls have red eyes and boys have brown eyes. But usually boys have the really pretty red eyes. All right, now we're going to talk about our owl friend over here. All right, so we're coming back here to talk about our barred owl ambassador. Now she's called a barred owl because she has bars on her feathers. Barred owls have a cousin out west called the spotted owl. And instead of having bars, spotted owls have spots. <laughs> so very creative when they named them. Now, how do I know that this bird is an owl? Because her face is very flat. It looks like she flew into the side of a building. But owls have a flat face for a very good reason. It's to help them hear. So they use this flat face, kind of like a satellite dish, 
They catch sound, they funnel it back into their ears, which are just right underneath of their feathers. You can't see them, but they're just big holes on either side of their head. And this owl could hear a mouse under a foot of snow from over 100 yards away. That's a whole football field, and she could hear a mouse. You wouldn't be able to hear a mouse if it was on the other side of the room you're sitting in right now. But she could hear one from an entire football field away. On top of that, her ears are crooked. So if you look like an owl, one of your ears would be up here, and one of them would be down here. And the reason why is that means the sound comes in at different times. And she turns her head until the sound comes in at the same exact time, and then she knows where that mouse is hiding. It's kind of like playing Marco Polo. So she just listens until the sound is the same, and then she can catch that mouse without ever even seeing it. That's a really important adaptation. Now, adaptation is kind of a big word, but all it means is a special tool an animal has to survive. It's kind of like their own superpowers. So adaptations are an animal's superpowers that help them to survive out in the wild. So she has amazing hearing and she has amazing eyesight. And guess what? She has three eyelids. You and I, we only have two eyelids. One on top, one on the bottom. Owls have three eyelids. One on top, one on the bottom, and a third one that comes from the corner of their eye that is semi-transparent. And transparent means they can see through it. So she can close her eyes and still be able to see. It's kind of like having a built-in pair of goggles. Can she pull a pair of goggles out when she's flying to protect her eyes? No way. So it has to be built into her body. It's another adaptation that helps her to survive out in the wild. Now, I'm going to set her down and we're going to talk about a couple other really cool things about owls. First off, I want you guys to think about all the things you've been eating since you've been home. I bet some of you have had hot dogs, chicken nuggets, maybe a bologna sandwich. When you ate your hot dog or your chicken nuggets, did you swallow bones? Did you swallow fur or feathers? No way, we can't swallow those things. Our stomachs wouldn't react very well. We might feel a little sick afterwards, right? But in the wild, animals have to eat fast because if they don't, something bigger might come along and steal their food or something bigger might come along and eat them. <laughs> so when she's eating out in the wild, if she catches a mouse, she might swallow it whole. If she catches a squirrel, she might swallow a whole tail or a whole leg. So she's swallowing bones and fur and all of that. Just like us, it can cause some problems for her stomach. She can't break those down either. But owls actually have two stomachs. So they're able to separate all the stuff that they can't digest and cough it up in a nice, neat little pellet. It's not the same as throwing up. It's kind of like how a cat coughs up a hairball. And we can pull those pellets apart and find the skeleton of what they had for dinner. So here is the skull of a rat, which means that the owl ate what? A rat for dinner. So this is how people a long time ago were able to tell what owls eat in the wild. They just waited for them to cough up a pellet, they pulled it apart, and they pulled the skeleton out and figured it out. So it was really smart. And it's a really neat way to help them to be able to eat fast and not get sick from it. You know, when you watch TV and they show owls, they don't always tell the truth. For one thing, every owl they show, they're gonna have them go hoo, 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 hoo. But guess what? Most owls don't hoot. When she calls, it sounds a little bit like she's saying, who cooks for you, who cooks for you all? <laughs> so lots of different owls make lots of different sounds. Another thing they might show with the owl is they might show them doing this with their heads turning them all the way around in a full circle. They cannot do that. <laughs> if they did that, they would break their necks. But owls can turn their heads further around than you and I, and there's a really good reason for that. I want you guys to hold your heads really still. Don't move your head at all, but look up. Look that way, look that way, look down. <laughs> Well, if you held your head still, what were you moving? Your eyeballs, right? 
guess what owls can't move? Their eyes. So if they want to look behind them, what do they need to be able to do? Turn their head backwards. So owls can't go all the way around, but they can go three quarters of the way around. Let's watch. They can turn their head so they're looking over this shoulder. Hey, I can do that too. They can turn their head until it's all the way backwards. I can't really do that, can I? <laughs> and then they can keep going until they're looking over their opposite shoulder. But then what do they have to do? Can they keep going until they're facing forward again? No, they have to go back around and start all over again from the other side. So owls can turn their heads really far around, but they can't go all the way around. <laughs> and to help them do this, they actually have extra bones in their neck. They have more bones than a giraffe in their neck. But that's actually not too impressive. You and I, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bones in our neck. Guess how many a giraffe has? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like us. Giraffes only have seven bones in their necks. But owls have 14 bones in their neck. That's a really important adaptation that helps them turn their heads so far. Let's count. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen bones. That's a lot of bones. So that's an important adaptation for them. All right, what we're going to do next, we're going to go outside and we're going to learn about a fox. So we're going to pause for just a moment and we're head on out there and there's lots of cool stuff to learn about. So see you soon. All right, guys, now it's time to learn about our red fox. Red foxes are one of the two native foxes here in Ohio. We have red foxes and we have gray foxes. I bet you can't guess why they're called red foxes. <laughs> it's because they're red. Well, usually. This fox looks a little bit different. Um, some foxes can be all black, some of them can be silver, and some of them can be in between. So she has a little bit of black and silver to her coat. But most of the red foxes you find in the wild are beautiful, bright, vibrant red. And you know what? She's running around and yipping and wagging her tail, so she might seem a little bit like a puppy dog. But even though she seems like a puppy dog, she is still a wild animal. And remember, where do wild animals belong? Out in the wild, that's right. But unfortunately, somebody thought she was really cute. So when she was a baby, they took her home to make a pet out of her. And that's not very nice. That means she now has to spend the rest of her life living here with us when she could have been free living out in the woods. And you know, even though foxes are cute, they don't make very good pets. First off, look at all of these holes all over the place. Foxes like to live underground in dens, so they do a lot of digging. And that's what she's done here. Plus, if you were here, you could smell that back here, it smells a little bit like a skunk. <laughs> that's because foxes actually use a smell called a musk to mark their territory. They don't have doors that they can lock. So what they do instead is they have a smell that tells other foxes, hey, this is my house, stay out. And if that fox comes in anyway, can they call the police? <laughs> no way. So they kind of have to fight over their territory. So like I said, a fox behaving like that in your house wouldn't be very nice at all, would it? And do you think the fox wants to live in your house? No, they want to be free out in the wild. All right, guys, it's time to go back inside and we're going to learn about a type of amphibian when we go in there. I bet you can't wait. We'll see you again here soon. Hi there, we're back and we're with our American toad. Now toads are a type of amphibian. We learned a little bit about birds today and birds are covered in what? Feathers. What about reptiles like the turtle? What are reptiles covered in? Scales, right? They have scales all over their skin. And mammals like us are covered in fur or hair. Now if we look at this guy, he doesn't have scales, he doesn't have feathers, he doesn't have fur, and he doesn't have hair. What he has is 
skin. And that skin is a little bit wet and bumpy. Now amphibians, they have to stay where it's nice and moist, so near a pond or a stream, sometimes underground or even under the water itself. Otherwise, they can dehydrate. And what that means is that they can dry up. So if you don't get enough to drink, you can get dehydrated. But for toads and salamanders and frogs, they can get dehydrated just by living in a place that's too dry because their skin soaks up all the moisture around them, but it also lets the moisture in their bodies out. So they have to be very careful about staying hydrated. <laughs> now I'm gonna get him out and show you a couple cool things about him. First off, this toad has really bumpy skin, right? If I were looking at a frog, he would probably have smooth skin. Frogs usually have smooth skin, toads usually have bumpy skin. Not always, like we said, animals don't read the rule book, so sometimes that's a little bit different. But another way you can tell is if you look at his legs. He has these short, little, wimpy back legs, and frogs have big, muscular, long back legs. And that's because toads can just make little hops, and frogs can make big, long leaps. So that's another difference between toads and frogs. But toads and frogs also have a lot of things in common. They do both like to live where it's nice and wet, although toads are more likely to be found in your garden than by the pond. <laughs> so you might find them all over in your yard. In the springtime, you'll probably hear them making lots of noise even. And that's when they come out and look for girlfriends. <laughs> so they're singing to get girlfriends. But Toads have a lot of really cool adaptations. Remember when we were learning about adaptations? Adaptations are an animal's superpowers. It's the tools built right into their body that help them to survive. So when he's sitting waiting for something to eat to come along, he has a secret trick up his sleeve. I want you guys to all stick your tongues out and I want you to try to touch the tip of your nose with your tongue. Mm, I can't do it, but I bet some of you can. Now, I want you guys to try to lick your eyeball with your tongue. <laughs> I feel a little scared if any of you could do that. But if you had a tongue like a toad or a frog, your tongue could be up to a third the length of your body. That means you would be able to lick the back of your head with your tongue. That's kind of gross. But for a toad, that's really important. It helps them to catch the insects and worms that they want to eat out there. On top of that, if you guys stick your tongue out right now, eh, your tongue is attached in the back of your throat. Toads and frogs, their tongues are attached in the front of their mouth. So it gives them a really long reach with that tongue and then they pull the bugs back into their mouth and then they blink. That sounds a little weird, doesn't it? But let's look at his eyes. His eyes stick way up over his head. And if I touch them, they drop down flat. That's because toads' eyes drop into their mouth and help them to push the food into the back of their throat because they can't swallow very well. That, if you, had, if you were like a toad, it means every time you took a bite of your chicken nugget, you would have to blink. Your eyes would have to fall into your mouth and push your food into your throat and then pop back up to the top of your head. <laughs> kind of gross and weird, but an important adaptation for toads. Now, let's talk about a few myths about toads. You know, some people think that if you touch a toad that you'll get a wart, and that's not true. We don't get warts from toads. When you pick them up, they're not really peeing on you. What they're doing is they're trying to escape. They release a really gross tasting liquid. It's kind of like if you were a dog and you had them in his mouth and all of a sudden you had this really nasty tasting water in your mouth, what would you do? you'd spit them out. <laughs> so that's one way he can avoid being eaten by the animals that want to have him for dinner. That's an important adaptation. We don't get warts from that. So you don't have to worry about that at all. But toads can be poisonous. So if you licked a toad, which would be super gross, you shouldn't ever lick a wild animal. But a toad in particular, it could make you really, really sick. So if you see a toad in the wild, it's a good idea to watch them, see how cool they are but to leave them alone and let them go about and do the things that they want to do. Because remember, 
wild animals don't like people. Wild animals want to be free and they want to live in the wild, right? <laughs> okay guys, well I hope you had a lot of fun and I hope you learned a lot of really cool things. And if you have any questions with your, your parents' help, you can come check us out, send us a message on Facebook and we'd be happy to answer them. Thanks guys and have a great day, bye!